Hey guys, Doug B here, your average axe wielding hack. Hey, I'm still going through some of the suggestions that you guys sent, and I really like this one that uh, Phil Williams sent in. Great video, Doug. Would be interested to hear your opinion on FRFR versus power amp and cab and what you use on these videos. Well, thanks for the comment, Phil. Let's dig in. First things first, let's define what it is that we're talking about. FRFR means full range, flat response. This means an FRFR speaker can handle any type of tone or frequency fed into it from an amp. The result is a neutral output that emulates the signal as cleanly and accurately as possible. Essentially, it's a blank canvas. FRFRs can either be powered or passive. You would use your neutral amp of choice to power a passive FRFR. Power amp plus cab is essentially exactly that. You would plug your guitar into the amp, which would power your guitar speaker cabinet of choice. This type of cabinet is designed to be used primarily with electric guitar and is not full range or flat response. Now I can actually see either of those types of rigs using FR, FRs, or using a power amp and cab as being the right rig depending on your situation. Looking at the Axe FX3 manual, they list nine different types of setups. FR, FR slash direct. Very simple. Connect XLR cables from your fractal unit to the inputs on a pair of personal powered FR, FRs. Set them up behind you or in front of you. FR, FR monitor plus FR, FR to front of house. Similar to the first situation, use out one for your FR, FRs. Edit your preset to include out two that you can send to the front of house. Or you can just send out one to front of house and have your sound guy route your signal back to your FR, FRs. Power amp and guitar speakers. Connect out one left to your power amp input. Disable speaker cab modeling. If you're using a neutral power amp, you can still use power amp modeling. If your power amp is not neutral, then turn power amp modeling off. Power amp and cab and FR, FR slash direct. You would edit your presets so that out one has cab modeling and goes to front of house. You would also add out two before the cab block and that would go to your power amp and cab. Four cable method and your amp of choice has to have an effects loop to make this work. You would plug into the input of the Axe FX3. This method requires a special preset that basically contains two separate processing chains. The first is for pre-effects like drive and wah. That one feeds to out three, which would go to the input on your amp. The second chain is for post effects, like delay and reverb. You would connect your amp's effects loop send to input four, and then you connect out four to your amp's effect loop return. Now the other three methods, FX processor only post, FX processor only pre, and inserting outboard gear also use a power amp and cab. The last method, multiple IO setups, is for being able to plug multiple instruments into the Axe FX3 and each instrument has its own separate processing path. If you absolutely love feeling the breeze behind your knees, you're going to probably have to go to the power amp and cab route. You can set up your presets so that front of house gets the amp and cab modeling and your feed to your power amp and cab bypasses the amp and cab modeling. Or let's say that you're a home player only and you already have one or two combo amps that you love. My former home studio rig was a good sill combo and a fender combo. They sounded really good together. So in that situation, I could have hooked up a fractal modeler and bypassed the amp and cab modeling. And by using two amps, I'd be able to use stereo effects, which I'd already been using prior to my switch to fractal. Same thing when using amps in the studio. You may have a recording setup that you are totally happy with. You can still add a fractal unit either via plugging straight in or using the effects loop if it has one. But as for me, I wanted to be able to use all of the amp and cab modeling. I wasn't interested in keeping my two combo amps. I wanted something that was neutral and could be loud enough to deal with the drummer right over my right shoulder. I also didn't want to blast my ears from behind. For live use, I wanted a pair of wedges facing up at me, a foot controller, and an expression pedal or two, and that's it. The same wedges could also be easily mounted on stands and used in my home studio, which used to be an apartment that's built over our garage. So I bought a pair of QSC K10.2 powered speakers, and I also have a QSC TouchMix 16 digital mixer, which is also the board our band uses to mix and record our gigs. The TouchMix 16 has enough aux sense so that each band member can have their own mix in their own monitor. I also use this rig with my keyboards in my home studio. 
As for what I use when making these videos, I have both my Axe FX3 and FM3 connected directly to my M1 Mac Mini via USB. I record the output from the Fractal units to Logic Pro, which sees it as inputs 1 and 2. I have also used the SPDIF output from the Axe FX3 plugged into the SPDIF in on my interface. Logic Pro sees the SPDIF inputs as inputs 9 and 10. SPDIF works well when I had a UAD Apollo interface, but that one died and I replaced it with a PreSonus 1810C. I'm getting some kind of weird hiccuping with SPDIF using the new interface, so I'm going to have to look into that in an upcoming video. Now I do my video editing in iMovie, and I import the stereo file from Logic to get the best possible audio. I don't do any post-production work to it, it's just the straight recorded output from the Fractal unit using USB into Logic. I sync the audio file from Logic with the audio from my imported video file, then I mute the audio from my camera. Works great and it's easy to do. I used to own two small recording studios, one in Alabama and the other in Tennessee. I can say that without hesitation that the output from the Fractal unit of choice straight into my DAW is the best sounding recorded guitar sound that I've ever had. No questions about it. It's similar to handing your soundman two XLR cables and telling him just to plug them in, you're ready to go. And the sound is fantastic. Yeah, it's literally that simple. So there you have it, guys. My take on FRFRs versus power amps and cabs. There really is no one best answer. Like we showed, there are multiple scenarios that you can try out to dial in your tone. After that, it's up to you to figure out which setup works best for you. All right, guys, now next Wednesday, we will be back at the factory working with the random number generator to pick out a preset for us to try. Now, you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, see you next week.